Well, today's vlog is about image of child. Now, before you switch off the camera, roll your eyes and go, I've heard it all before, Lindy Bell, hang on a minute, because this is actually a very necessary vlog to do at this time in our, in our year. We're seeing on the playground, few children who really struggle to share, really struggle to give way um, to others. Um, and we think that this is as a result of their constructed image of themselves as more important than others. Um, have you ever heard of lawnmower parenting? I'm assuming you've heard of helicopter parenting where you hover above your child kind of um, uh, trying to um, save them from any harm. Well, lawnmower parenting <laughs> is is parenting that where you smooth out the path in front of your child so that really nothing gets in their way. Um, there's quite a lot of fixing and a lot of rescuing um, the child from the consequence of their own actions and sometimes from their own emotions as well. And um, this kind of parenting has an absolutely devastating effect on the child's image of themselves as a citizen, as an equal participant, rather than somebody who is powerful over and above someone else. So in our country, um, you know, this is such an important conversation to have with our children. Um, and they learn through, through your um, role modeling of their values of equality. So one of the very sad effects of lawnmower parenting where you kind of fix and rescue and save the child from from their own um, from feeling hurt or from experiencing emotions um, and that is is that the child becomes completely incapacitated uh, by the child the parents image of them so if the parent rescues the child from uh, a consequence say a child drops something well then you must pick it up uh, and if the parent picks it up for the child the child learns in very million small ways that it's actually not their job uh, to fix what they broke and um, to pick up what they dropped <laughs> and uh, and so the child becomes quite entitled now in this country we really cannot afford <laughs> to have more entitled people. We want children who are democratic citizens and we are trying at Small World to hold the space as much as we can um, to reflect to the child their rights as a child to be who they are but also their responsibilities um, in that as well. Another, another sad consequence is a child who, for whom everything is done, not everything, I'm using huge <laughs> broad strokes here but the child becomes entitled and um, they also lack grit so and resilience um, and we know that the importance of grit and resilience as they move on to primary schools it's paramount to the academic success um, a child's ability to overcome through struggle um, and to yes uh, experience a bit of a speed bump in the road but that speed bump isn't removed from the child's path. The obstacles are, in fact, um, the things through which a child um, grows and uh, develops. Um, there's also, um, you know, another consequence of this in that the, the child who's treated in this way feels as if they're, they're one step ahead or, or, or that they're, they're the best. Um, the best uh, and, and so it makes it very difficult for a child to be able to play to be able to play well with a partner, with a peer, because if they're, they think they're entitled to more, they will be the ones grabbing, snatching, uh, only wanting to speak without listening to the perspectives of the other, and so many other consequences. Um, so <laughs> I think this is a very, very, very important uh, thing that we can transform in our community, is our image of children. What we're talking about here is, is that we see children at Small World, we see children as having the capability, the strategies built inside them, but they are often not given the opportunity to activate those strategies, 
and to um, build a bridge and to to rise above to get to get over it to get over the bridge <laughs> um, because they are so often rescued from those moments that the parent then becomes the child's build bridge here yeah, make a friend here yeah. um, let me tell your teacher uh, that she's responsible to find for finding your shoes after school and actually it's the child's responsibility to put their shoes in their bag if they take it off. It's the child's responsibility to take themselves off to the toilet if they, you know, already um, trained, um, toilet trained. So um, I think that, um, you know, things that we can change at home, for example, is, uh, are your is your child doing chores? Is your child helping out around the house? Um, you know, do they take their plate to the sink when they're finished? Uh, children as young as four, three or four, can make their own beds once a week, twice a week, even every day. Um, children um, can pack their own bag for school. Um, obviously, with your with your guidance, this is what needs to go in the bag. Um, children. Um, can most certainly walk into school and not be carried. They can walk in on their own two feet. Um, children do not be need do not need to be fed. Uh, they can feed themselves. That's why we have the very forest snack <laughs> to capacitate children so that they can feel independent. Um, and uh, so 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 many things that we forget when our little babies are hold, held in our arms and the care and is so intense and it's so all-encompassing but when they turn into toddler years from the infant years we forget um, as they become toddlers and older to to also transform our parenting and our image of child that they're not babies anymore and that they we meet them where they're at um, Maria Montessori, she said, never do for a child what they feel they can do for themselves. And um, I think that's a really amazing motto for us parents. We know that you love your children very, very much. We also love your children very much. And like you, we want to see the very best for them. Love is not just about getting. I'm reminded here of a poem that starts like this and it says after a while you learn the subtle difference between holding a hand and chaining a soul you learn that love is not leaning and that company is not always security and you learn that kisses aren't contracts and presents aren't promises and our children are looking to us as the leaders in our families the small little example of a democratic uh, society um, they're looking to us as leaders to hold the space for children the space for democratic values where everybody helps out and everybody gets the reward for it um, children need us to be strong to be firm yes and fun <laughs> and fair um, but they will push boundaries in this stage and but it's up to us to be the boundary um, that they get to push, meaning that we are rock solid in our values um, of democracy and equality and we don't let them get away with a weaker, poorer image of themselves um, as citizens, as future citizens. So I told you it was strong <laughs> and I really hope that this is a conversation starter. I'm not preaching, I'm just telling you what we see sometimes on the playground um, and I think that this can make a huge difference if we tweak up our image of children and expect a little more from them.